Recording in progress. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, the time is now 3.30, and I hereby call the September 19th, 2023 meeting of the St. Joseph County Area Planning Commission to order. Before we begin, I have a few note announcements to make. This meeting is being held in person and virtually on the fourth floor council's chambers of the County City Building as posted on our website, sjcindiana.com slash agenda center. We will first ask for any public comment for those sitting in the chambers then call on any members in the public standing remotely. If a member of the public attending remotely wishes to participate in the public comment portion of the meeting, they should indicate this by using the raise hand function in Zoom and or by messaging the host in the chat function. Please clearly state your name and address for the record. We ask that board members state their name when making a motion and a second. Lastly, please silence all your cell phones so they do not disturb the meeting. Now that announcements are over, may we please have the roll call, Shelley? Mr. Devon? Present. Mr. Hawley? Present. Mr. Krasinski? Present. Ms. Hannon? Present. Mr. England? Present. Ms. McCombs? Present. Ms. Gengeron? Dr. Thacker? Present. Seven members present, one on Zoom. We're missing one, Shelly. You forgot me. DJ Tavernier. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Um, we are a nine-member commission. We currently have, in, have seven members present in person and one member attending virtually today. If any petitioner would prefer to have their petition heard with more members present, they may ask staff to have their item tabled to a future meeting when more members might be present. Um, with that, may we have the reading for petition number one, please. Rezonings, a combined public hearing on a proposed ordinance of Alliance Staffing LLC to terminate the written commitments and final site plan required by rezoning ordinance number 11-96 and to rezone from B business district to O office district <coughs> and keeping the following variances. Variance number one, from section 154.152 sub C1 to allow a 10 foot front south building setback where 35 feet is required. Variance two from section 154.152 sub C2 to allow a five foot side west building setback where 20 feet is required. Variance number three from section 154.152 sub C3 to allow a rear north building setback of 20 feet where 40 feet is required. And variance number four from section 154.152 sub D3 to allow a minimum rear north yard setback of zero foot where 20 feet is required for a parking lot. Property located at 12525 Beckley Street, St. Joseph County, APC application number 3013-23. Shelly, could you click on the PowerPoint? Good afternoon, this is Fari Al-Sharif, Area Plan Commission staff. The petitioner today is requesting a zone change from B Business District to O Office to accommodate their existing staffing office off Beckley Street in Granger. This site is subject to a site plan and written commitments from a previous rezoning in 1995, which restricts its use to a data communications office and shop. The petitioner would like to terminate those site plans and written commitments and rezone, thus making the staffing office legal. The petition today also has four requested variances with it. The petitioner is hoping to add an addition onto the property to expand the office. Variances are needed for this addition and to make the building and drive on site legal in the office district. To the north is an unimproved alley and parcel zoned R single family district. To the south are parcel zoned B business with professional and medical offices on site and some vacant property. Directly to the east and west are parcel zone R single family containing single family dwellings. 
Here is a one to 1.5 story building on site. As stated, this property was rezoned in 1995 from our single family to be business to be used as a data communications equipment shop and office. At that time, a site plan and written commitments were adopted to make sure it was used only for that data office. The building on site was renovated slightly in 1997 to accommodate the office use. The residential homes nearby were built around the same time as this building and have similar characteristics and style. Sometime around 2005, the data communications office closed and the property came to be used as a staffing office. Looking more at the on-site characteristics, this is a better view of the existing asphalt drive on site and some of the trees to the eastern property line. Here is the northern property line giving a rear view and showing the drive, which goes almost all the way to the rear property line. This is looking south facing Beckley Street and SR23 beyond it. So this is what you would see if you came out of the front door of the office. As mentioned, there are still residential properties to the east and west of this parcel, despite development nearby. And both Beckley and Main Street are low volume residential streets at the intersection between Beckley and Main. The site plan shows the current building on site and the proposed ad addition to the rear of the building. It also outlines the driveway, which is currently the only access onto the site. Staff is not proposing any new written commitments. It's important to keep in mind that the site in the addition must comply with all St. Joseph County landscaping and parking regulations, which may alter the site plan. Looking more at the state law criteria, the rezoning is supported by goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan, specifically locating employment uses so that any conflicts with residential land use are minimized. The existing building is consistent with the housing characteristics of the existing residential properties. The addition will be built in a similar style. Limited development is appropriate at this site given the other nearby office buildings. The most desirable use of the property is a limited office or business that does not generate significant increases in traffic. Uh, rezoning the property and terminating written commitments and the final site plan will legalize the current staffing office use. We believe a staffing office, even with the expansion, will likely not generate a significant increase in traffic. And zoning this parcel to office district will also restrict the site from being developed to anything more intense and commercial in nature, because the office district excludes retail and commercial uses. The rezoning would also promote conservation of property values, as the office district requires extensive screening and landscaping. Finally, we believe all of this supports responsible growth and development on the property. Classifying the land as office is a more appropriate categorization of the property. Therefore, staff recommends this be sent to the county council with a favorable recommendation. As stated earlier, the petition is also attached to four variances. The petitioner is proposing an 1800 square foot addition to the rear of the property. This, along with the rezoning, triggers the need for variances. I'll also add that the proposed addition will require the entire site to go through our commercial plan review process where we check that the site complies with St. Joseph County ordinances, including all the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Going into our analysis of these variances, variances one, two, and three are all requests to reduce the required setback to allow for the existing structure on site to be legal in the office district and for the proposed addition to be built in line with the existing structure. Looking to the state law criteria for reviewing variances. First, the existing use and structure are not injurious to health, safety, and general welfare of the community. The proposed addition will not affect the adjacent properties in a substantially adverse manner. Next, the use and value of the adjacent properties. Currently, there is some screening toward the residential use on the east and west of the property provided by a tree line and a fence, respectively. As stated, the proposed addition will require the property to go through a plan review process, which will require them to correct any landscaping or screening deficiencies. Thus, the effect on adjacent properties of continued use and expansion would be limited. Finally, we do believe there is practical difficulty. Strict application of the terms of the chapter would not allow them to continue to use the staffing office or expand it in line with the existing structure. We are recommending approval of these three variances. Looking separately at variance four, this is also a rear setback variance which would legalize the existing drive on site. 
Currently, vehicles were observed parking on both this drive and the unimproved grass. However, as I said earlier, the project will be required to go through administrative plan review. At that point, they must bring parking into compliance with the zoning ordinance. This would include, but is not limited to, adding the required number of spaces, marking them with lines and curbs, and providing an adequate drive aisle width and a durable surface. Landscaping will also need to comply with the zoning ordinance. For those reasons, we're also recommending approval of this variance. For the three criteria specifically, the approval would not be injurious. The asphalt drive, which extends all the way to the rear north property line, has been present on the property at least since renovations in 1997. The use and value will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. The use does not generate a considerable increase in traffic, such as to overflow to the residential areas, and parking must comply with the zoning ordinance. Finally, the strict application would result in practical difficulties. The asphalt drive would have to be partially removed to comply with the setback requirements, which may also create practical difficulties in potential improvements. Thus, we recommend approval of this variance as well. To summarize quickly, the petitioner would like to terminate written commitments and a final site plan attached to the site and rezone to O Office District. The rezoning and termination of the written commitments and site plan will legalize the use of the property as a staffing office and prevent further commercial development. We are recommending that the rezoning be sent to the county council with a favorable recommendation. The rezoning also necess necessitates the four variances. We are also recommend approval of the four variances. I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions at this time? Forgive me if I miss this, but um, probably when this house was built, it was on a well and a septic. Yes, right now there is a private well on and, site. Yeah, I noticed that. But is, is it hooked up to the Granger uh, sewer process? I couldn't clarify whether or not it was directly hooked up to Granger sewer or not. Okay, we can ask them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No other further questions. May we have the petition by the petitioner, please? Yep. Step over here. Yep. Absolutely. My name is Josh Thornton. I'm with Adam Marsh and representing the client, Alliance Staffing LLC. Um, and if I can answer your question, uh, it is hooked up to Granger's uh, waistline. Thank you. Anything you'd like to add or talk about? or um, Other than the client is looking to uh, comply with the current uh, situation, um, they're looking to comply uh, having purchased the property in 2022 and not knowing the written commitments standing, they're obviously looking to operate and expand um, a couple of offices into this space and be a good partner with the community. Um, and please let me know if there's any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will open this up to the public. If there's anybody present wishing to speak in favor of this petition, please come forward and state your name and address. Seeing none, is there anybody online wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Please use the raise hand feature. Seeing none, is there anybody present wishing to speak against this petition? Please come forward and state your name and address. Again, seeing none. Anyone online wishing to speak against this petition, please use the raise hand feature. Looks like we have one there. Steve. Up. Go ahead, Steve Up. Yes, hi, Steve Francis, 54174 Jude Lake Drive. I don't have specific comments on this property and the variances, but, uh, and I wasn't, it wasn't clear to me whether, um, the use, uh, the written commitments had been violated um, in any way um, uh, previous to the new owner, but I just wanted to register an objection to, um, if that's the case, abandoning written commitments um, without any kind of 
just with a favorable recommendation with these kind of variances, I want to be uh, urge caution on because I think it sends certainly a, um, a message to the community that somehow written commitments in a property, uh, even when it changes hands, are not applicable. Um, and although they are going through the process to, to make it right, uh, I do urge the commission to um, either, and I don't know, I mean, again, if, if this was not used in, a, in an improper way, then, um, then they're, you know, they're perfectly within their right to try to change that. If they're using it that way and there's no compensation, no penalty, no fine, nothing, then the written commitments, uh, as I've seen elsewhere, that are abandoned uh, are going to be disregarded and also um, kind of meaningless in some sense. So that's my objection here. I urge a neutral, perhaps a neutral um, or unfavorable recommendation or tabling it uh, to discuss that issue if it's relevant. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else wishing to speak against this petition? Use the raise hand feature. Saying none. Uh, Josh, do you want to respond to that at all? Or? Sorry, to the written commitments. Um, my understanding is that the site was previously um, limited to the use of sales of digital communications with no, uh, no direct sales on site. Currently, Alliance staffing does not provide any direct sales or client meetings on site and meets the spirit of the original com commitments, but as they are not a digital communication sales company, um, they do not meet the direct use. So I would, I would urge you to, um, or the community to consider that they are attempting to meet the spirit, but not the exact use while they do have private offices on site um, they are looking to provide um, a very similar uh, use and be a, a good neighbor still to the community around them thank you thank you josh any last questions by the commission or comments I mean, I, I, I um, are you, well, it depends, who are you? <laughs> Is it too late? Are, are you property owner or who are you? No, the, I'm representing the property owner. I'm, okay. I'm his realtor. That's all. That's fine. Can we, it's not that important. I was going to say, I, I, I mean, I grew up in the community. I grew up in the area. Obviously, it's nearly 30 years since that this got passed, and a lot's changed in that area, like, like Bob mentioned. Since then, you know, they, they expanded the greater, the sewer district to try and promote businesses to hook up to it, to try and promote business and growth in the Granger district. So I think this is one of those prime examples of, of, of that being the case. So, you know, I know that's a small little niche area of residential homes in that area, but like staff mentioned, you know, zoning it to office reduces that, you know, magnitude of, of what could be there under the, the commercial district, like everything else that's in that area. So um, I think if anything, this is making it better usage for, you know, what that initial intent was for. So I'd be in favor of this moving forward. But just to clarify, we have three, I think different things we have to vote on here. One, we have to vote on the removal of all the written commitments, correct? There's a removal of written commitments and removal of a site plan and removal of, or and the special use. That would all be recommendations. And then there are four variances. The variances and the rest of it definitely have to be separate. If you wanted to treat for example, all four variances the same way you could vote all in one on that, or if you wanted to give the same recommendation to more than one of the special use and the 
So we can vote on removal of Rezoning. The I keep saying special use because I did BZA so much longer. <laughs> Rezoning <laughs> and the uh, site plan and the uh, commitments. You could do multiple of those in one if you intended to recommend the same way. That makes sense. So we could, we could vote to remove the remit, written commitments and the site plan specific. Can we make the motion for the rezoning on the same motion too? If you're intending to do the same recommendation yes. for all three, you could do all three together. Okay. Does anybody have a motion? I do. I make a motion for APC number 3013-23 that we go ahead with the all the variances that are proposed. Uh, we have to vote on the Where do we have to vote? last. We're doing the recommendation oh. one first. Sorry. Okay, wait. I missed that. Okay. Variances have to go last. We have okay. to vote on the rezoning and rezoning. the written commitments and the site plan first. Okay, then I make a motion on area plan 3013-23 that we go ahead and pass a favorable recommendation for the rezoning, the, now I lost it. Termination, oh. of, Termination of written agreements and site plan. site plan. And the site plan. To the county council. To the county council, thank you. Bob Holly, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to send APC 3013-23 to the County Council for a removal of written commitments and site plan requirement and approval of rezoning with a favorable recommendation. Uh, we have to do individual vote, right? Because we have a... Dr. Thacker's, Dr. Online. Thacker's online. So yep. can we have roll call, please? Mr. England? Aye. Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Ms. Hannon? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Dr. Thacker? Yes. Mr. Tavernier? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. McCombs? Yes. Mr. Devon? Yes. Motion carries. Now we have to vote on the variances. Those can be all together though. Yes. Okay, I make a motion, Elizabeth McCombs, that we pass 30113-23 on all variances with the favorable recommendation, recommendation to the county council. No, uh, we nope, actually vote on this. this one you get to do. We what? We actually get approved variances. Okay, I'm having a good day here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, well, I want it to go through, so I just we vote. We just make a motion to approve. Okay, then I vote to approve the variances for 313-23. Bob Holly, second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to approve APC 3013-23, all four variances to be approved. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. England? Yes. Ms. Hannon? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Dr. Thacker? Yes. Mr. Tavernier? Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Ms. McCombs? Yes. Mr. Devon? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple text amendments to vote on. Can we have a reading for text amendment number one, please? Text amendment number one, a proposed ordinance initiated by the Area Plan Commission of St. Joseph County, Indiana, on behalf of the Town of North Liberty, amending Title 8, Article 6 of the Zoning Ordinance for the Town of North Liberty to add smoke shop as a controlled use. APC application number 3014-23. Good afternoon, this is Carl Brown Grimm, Area Plan Commission staff. Uh, so currently North Liberty uh, has uh, regulations for controlled use, uh, which are defined as uses that have objectionable uh, secondary impacts and a concentration of those controlled uses in a particular area 
can increase the impact of those objectionable secondary impacts to the point where a deleterious impact is created on surrounding properties. Uh, the town currently permits uh, these controlled uses only as a special exception use in the uh, C commercial and GI general industrial district of the town of North Liberty, essentially meaning that um, the, these uses need to be approved by the town council to be permitted there. Um, based on discussions with the town of North Liberty, there's a desire to regulate uh, smoke shops uh, and where they could be located and to limit their placement. So this uh, text amendment adds smoke shops to the list of recognized controlled uses um, in the town zoning ordinance. Uh, so like I said, it will add smoke shops uh, to the list of recognized controlled uses under uh, section 601B. Uh, other uses in this section include uh, adult businesses, uh, casinos, and then like off-track uh, parimutuel wagering facilities. Uh, an amendment will also add the following definition uh, to the section directly under uh, 601B for smoke shops. Uh, so the definition of smoke shop will be defined as uh, a retail store where the primary use is the retail sale of smoking products for off-site consumption. Smoking products include, but are not limited to, plant products such as tobacco that are intended to be smoked, uh, vaping liquid, electronic smoking devices, smoking accessories, and related items. Staff does recommend favorably with this text amendment, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Carl. And since APC is the presenter, we are the petitioner as well on this one. The yep. So any other questions? So this is like this is like the the smoke shops, like I don't know what are they called, low bobs or something Lobobs. like that. Yeah. yeah. Not that I wanted to put them on blast, but it's the only one I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that, that kind of idea. About. Yeah. Yeah. Not this wouldn't because uh, it defines a retail store where the primary use is a retail sale of smoking products. So like gas stations wouldn't fall under this. Is vape shops too. Isn't there yeah. some vape shop coming up around here now too? So this includes them. Also? Yes. Under just, that definition, just in, just in North Liberty. Yeah, just in North yeah. Liberty. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I will now open this to the public. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Please come forward and state your name and address. Hi, I'm Vicki Kitchen. I'm the clerk treasurer for the town of North Liberty, 300 South Main Street, North Liberty, Indiana. The town has put quite a bit of investment through Stellar into our downtown and our commercial district as, lo as long as our residential. And we just think that the smoke shop or a vape shop would be detrimental to what the town has already got approved through the stuff. We're a designated historic downtown and we're on the national register as, as is our town park. And we just wanna make sure that we keep our historic vibe and not go quite so modern. Thank you. I'm Tracy O'Connor. I'm a business owner and treasurer for the uh, Main Street um, community. And I'm just, I'm not, we're not in favor. We don't feel that this is um, good for our historical facades that we like. We need your address. Oh, 600 South State Street, North Liberty. Thank you. Is anybody else? Present, wishing to speak in favor of this petition, please come forward, state your name and address. Seeing none, anybody online wishing to speak in favor of this petition, please use the raise hand feature. Seeing none, anybody present wishing to speak against this petition, please come forward. Again, seeing none, anybody online wishing to speak against this petition, please use the raise hand feature. Again, seeing none, I will now close this to the public. Any last comments, questions? So we'll just, staff? We'll just, are we making a recommendation or are we voting to approve this? We're making a recommendation. recommendation. To the town of North Liberty. Or no recommendation to the town council of North Liberty. Oh, then I make a favorable recommendation for 301423 to the Town Council of North Liberty, Elizabeth McCombs. If 
Bob Hawley, second that. We have a motion and a second to send APC 3014-23 to the Town Council of North Liberty with a favorable recommendation. All those in, I don't know. Nope. Uh, Oops, we got to take it. Mr. England? Yes. Ms. Hannon? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Dr. Thacker? Yes. Mr. Tavernier? Yes. Ms. McCombs? Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Mr. Devon? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, reading for text amendment number two. Text amendment number two, a proposed ordinance of the Area Plan Commission of St. Joseph County amending Title 15 land usage chapter 153 subdivisions of St. Joseph County Code, section 153.420, to allow required surety for completion of improvements to be adjusted for inflation. APC application number 3015-23. Good afternoon, Sean Klein, Area Plan Commission staff. Uh, so this is a text amendment to the subdivision control ordinance. Um, it would allow for uh, the, the surety that is um, assessed at the time when secondary approval is granted to uh, cover any sort of improvements such as uh, paving of streets, uh, stormwater infrastructure, any of that that um, should the developer um, not end up completing those after secondary approval as a subdivision, in, uh, subdivision is being built out, um, the surety would cover that. Uh, currently, the county engineer um, can only calculate this as 100% of the current cost of the labor and materials um, to complete those improvements. So uh, this text amendment would allow the county engineer to um, adjust that figure based on estimates for future inflation for labor and materials, um, both initially when secondary approval is granted and then allow for um, annual adjustments um, until the subdivision is fully completed. Um, obviously, under the current system, if we're requiring 100% of the cost at the time of secondary approval, um, a, a couple to a few years pass before all those improvements are put in, uh, and say that the developer's out of the picture for one reason or another. Um, the amount that the county has access through th um, through that surety falls short of the actual cost to finish the subdivision. So that's what we're trying to correct for here. Um, staff recommends that this be sent to the county council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, this is a ordinance by the Area Plan Commission, so that was the proposal as well. To Correct. Any questions by the commission? Sean, could you cover, what, what do you mean by improvements? Yeah, so when we grant um, secondary approval to a subdivision, um, that will allow the subdivider to actually split up the lots and start selling them and start developing them. Um, but oftentimes, um, nothing's really finished in terms of the roads um, being paved, everything being properly graded, the retention ponds being dug, um, everything that's needed to make sure that the subdivision is functional when, um, when the county essentially um, takes control of the street right away and possibly the ditch maintenance. So that, that's what the surety is meant to cover. Thank you. So basically you're saying that the project does get finished. Exactly, right. It'll, it's to make sure it gets finished one way or another. Yes, okay. Could you, I know we talked before this, could you say how many like we have currently that are out there? Yes, um, so Go ahead. <laughs> uh, currently there are um, 29 subdivisions that have yet to be fully completed that we have active surety on. Um, we were discussing this with Brandy earlier. Um, this text amendment would not apply retroactively to that surety amount. That's already set. Of those 29, you said, uh, how far back would that go? Um, Probably nothing further back than 
five years at the most from what I'm seeing. Good. Good. Thank you. That's surprising. Yeah. Jumping on Bob's question, is there a time limit, though, on that surety, or that, that could go on for six years, eight years, ten years, Randy? Per the ordinance, it's initially you have three years to finish the subdivision. You have to provide surety for that three years. Um, if for some reason that's proven to be impossible, then I think the county engineer will allow you to extend the surety from there. But you at least have to cover for three years. Didn't it, wasn't it that that subdivision had to have X amount of homes in it before the final surface coat could be put on? Uh, yeah, once you um, get it 80% full of 80, homes, yeah, okay. then you have to have all the required improvements in it at that time. And, and, but that could take, you know, I've known the subdivisions that go out longer than three, four, oh, five, yeah, six yeah. years. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so the, the initial deadline is three years or 80% capacity, but that can definitely be adjusted. So. Is that for the entire development or is that for like that phase? That's There's for that phase. That's, that yeah, that phase, that's so. just for the phase. Because okay. it's that final section that'll get the secondary approval. Is, so. is the developer notified that, that surety is going to run out? Yes. Yeah. By you or by the county engineer? By the county engineer's county office. Engineer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hmm? Is there a cap? Um, there's not a cap currently, no, or being proposed. The cap is 100% of the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, but your inflation is you're, you're guesstimating on what the inflation is going to be three years, five years, eight years down the line, and you can't, you can't ask for that up front when you don't know what the, act, what the actual answer is going to be. So there's two pieces. There's the piece I think you're talking about, which is the county engineer being able to at the time of the initial secondary approval saying, we think at the estimated inflation is X, so the surety amount is going to be Y to cover all of that, which is explicitly authorized by the state. It just for some reason wasn't in the ordinance. Then there's the second piece, which tries to make it more realistic, like what you're talking about, so that it can get reassessed so you can actually see what the cost is at the time. So, so every year they get to say, this is how much it costs now to do it. This is how much the surety should be. The engineer can look at it and say, okay. Yeah, so it's the developer that submits an estimate annually for the engineer's approval. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that one is actually the a little bit, I will say, I don't see a reason we can't put that in there. It makes sense for me to do it but it's not explicitly authorized like the other, the estimating of the inflation is for unknown reasons. The state specifically said you can estimate inflation in your uh, initial surety request. I'm sure they did. Yeah. But uh, the other was a, an invention that we came up with to try to make it more realistic that uh, is not specifically mentioned by the state, but we think we are allowed to do it, so. John, is Inverness on that list? That's longer than five years. Oh, I'm sure. That's longer than five years. That's not completed yet. Which one, Bob, was that? Well, there's a lot of neighbors at Whippoorwill Valley, and there's a lot of them there. Yeah, yeah. That Inverness off of That one's in bad shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Inspiration says non applicable. <laughs> <laughs> one and two. And a, and a. And a. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Just one that comes to mind. By the commission? <laughs> We will open it up to the public. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in favor of, favor of this text amendment? Please come forward, state your name and address. Seeing none. Anybody online wishing to speak in favor of this text amendment? Use the raise hand feature. Again, seeing none. Anybody present wishing to speak against this petition? Please come forward. Seeing none. Anybody online wishing to speak against this petition, please use a raise hand feature. Again, seeing none, I will now close this to the public. Any last comments, questions to staff? Otherwise, may we have a motion? 
I make a motion that we pass ABC, APC number 301523 with a favorable recommendation to the council. Second. We have a motion to second to send APC 3015-23 to the County Council with a favorable recommendation. Can we have a roll call vote? Oh. Mr. England? Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Ms. Hannon? Yes. Dr. Thacker? Yes. Mr. Tavernier? <laughs> no. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Ms. McCombs? Yes. Mr. Devon? <laughs> yes. Motion carries. Uh, do we have any items not requiring public hearing? We have minutes. We get a chance to look over the minutes for August 15th. Bob Hawley, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes for the August 15th, 2023 meeting of the Area Plan Commission of St. Joseph County. Elizabeth McCombs, I'll second that. We have a motion to second to approve the August 15th, 2023 minutes. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Tavernier? Yes. Dr. Thacker? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Ms. Hannon? Yes. Mr. England? Yes. Ms. McCombs? Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Mr. Devon? Yes. Executive Director's Report. Abby, do we have anything? <laughs> Want me to do a quick rundown? Whatever you all got. All right. So that text amendment that you all uh, passed to the County Council with a favorable recommendation for fences and accessory structures wanted to note, Bob and DJ know this, eliminated two variances out of the gate that were on, that were both on our, or two that were on our agenda last week for the BZA. So that's a good sign. That means what the intent was, was accomplished to take care of like a lot of our high volume variances. Uh, code enforcement, we have a lot going on for code right now. We have three ordinance updates going to the county council um, committee next week and uh, an amendment to the county building code to allow, to establish a procedure to board up unsafe or secure unsafe properties. And we have a round of Compliance orders going to the county commissioners tonight for approval of unsafe properties that have been identified by building and code staff. So uh, for compliance or demolition. Uh, you all have had light agendas, but our BZA has not been as <laughs> blessed. We have four special uses going to the county council that were heard by the BZA last week. Uh, and then we have processed a number of vacations Lately, they don't come to you for review, but they come through our office and go to the county council. And we've had like three uh, just recently that we've we've been working on, and that's all I have for now. Could you elaborate on what you mean by unsafe or homes that have to be what destroyed or taken down? Properties that are. Um, determined to be, or that have been condemned by the building department and determined to be unsafe structurally. Would people be living in those? That's part of why we were putting, we put forward the request to the county, or the amendment, I have to be careful because Brandy helped me do everything. <laughs> Did I say it correctly? Uh, but we, our building department has adopted the Indiana unsafe building law. That references a procedure to seal up properties that you have to have in your local ordinance. We don't have that, so we're putting that in uh, to allow us to seal up properties that are have broken windows or doors, Bob, like what you're asking about, because we have, through co code enforcement, become aware of a lot more properties that have been unsecured out in the county. Not that it's something that our code enforcement program set out to address as, like, the major issues, but as we were getting complaints that come through the website or to our code inspectors, they're getting complaints of properties that are abandoned that people are getting into. 
I was going to say, I wondered if you had, you know, these uh, people that are homeless would be in living in these properties. So if you were looking for like what the state calls an unsafe building that would fall under this, yeah, thank you. Um, it would be a building or a structure or any part of one that is in an impaired structural condition that makes it unsafe to a person or property is a fire hazard, a hazard to public health, a public nuisance, dangerous to a person or property because of violation of a statute or ordinance concerning building condition or maintenance, or uh, vacant or blighted or not maintained in a manner that would allow human habitation, occupancy, or use under the requirements of a statute or an ordinance. So it covers the range of things, and there's a range of things that the building department is able to tell them to do ranging from vacating it, sealing it up, and demolishing it. But the sealing it up part required that it be in accordance with a uniform standard established by ordinance. And so up till when this goes through, they couldn't actually issue that medium level of order because there was no uniform standard established. It was either leave it there or knock it down. <laughs> I don't know if this would be fair to say, but it seems to me anyway that this code enforcement process that were taking place seems to be taking steps in the right direction as far as what's, what we can do to, you know, eliminate a lot of these problems out in the county. When I came here, the fact that this process didn't exist was a little surprising because, I mean, the folks in the towns, you have a vacant house that people are getting into. We, I'm used to just ordering a board up, right, I, and I taking care of it, land. right? Yeah. So even though it is the county and we don't have, like, the density of what you would see mm -hmm. in the town or, or, the, or a city, it, I mean, we have at any given point 12 to 15 of these, like, depending on what's going on. Mm -hmm. that I think will be uh, ad just address basic health public safety concerns. So, so when there's an when there's a order for a property to be boarded up because it's you got a bunch of broken windows and nobody's mm -hmm. living there, does that expense just go to the property taxes of the property owner and, and get leaned on the property then or what? It does my town. <laughs> <laughs> Liz is answering for me, yeah. So it would uh, be we would use the funds that have been allocated by county council or a, a small portion of the funds, the demolition funds. That, mm -hmm. that determination has been made by the auditor that we can uh, designate a small amount of the county demolition funds for board ups. But, but Abby, when we first got into this, you know, <laughs> when was to start slow and gradually what you're doing now is, you know, putting things in you know, based on time and what you're seeing, but yeah, we didn't want to go full bore right away. And it, it seems related, but technically speaking, the board ups that we're talking about are not part of the code enforcement program. It will be the code enforcement people who probably handle it just because it, it kind of seems like their thing and the building department would rather they do it. But the actual legal regime that board ups happen under is under the unsafe building law, not related to code enforcement. It's just that the county demo funds live in the code enforcement budget, as I think Bobby Kay knows, and they're getting a lot of the complaints because they're like the face of the county. They're out every day, um, everything coming through report of concern. I mean, and we coordinate that to Brandy's point with the building department very closely. Good job. Thank you, Abby. Anything else? Otherwise, do we have a motion for adjournment? I'll make a motion. We adjourn this meeting. Elizabeth McCombs, I'll second that. A motion to second adjourn. Do we need a roll call for this? If Mr. Sacker is still on. He's still on. Roll call, please. Mr. England? Yes. Mr. Hawley? Yes. Ms. Hannon? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Ms. McCombs? Yes. Dr. Thacker? Yes. Mr. Tavernier? Yes. Mr. Devon? Yes. Thank you, everybody.
there are. I don't. I feel like I didn't know enough about.